So I want to start with a real scenario, which I know when I was a project manager probably happened to me on a weekly basis, if not more, see if I'm not the only one in the room who's had this happen to them. You're in the back of the room, getting ready to start another project status meeting, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're pouring your coffee, Luke Jones comes running up to you. Dana, oh my goodness, I'm so glad I had a chance to catch up with you. It's just been so crazy. I know we're getting ready to start the meeting, but I just wanted to let you know. Um, I know that I said I was going to get that information sent to the team for the meeting today, but I just didn't get a chance to do it. Have you heard that before? Yes, some version of that. Oh my goodness, there was a website crash fiasco. I know you heard about that. I got, I got pulled into that and I was having to pull late hours. So I know, you know, I, I, I said I was going to, you know, get you all that information by today, but just didn't get a chance to do it. So my question to you is, if you're the project manager, when you turn to Luke Jones in that moment, what do you say? Okay. I <laughs> so we're going to we're going to do this in a little bit of a, a team case scenario. I want you guys to talk about it. So this is going to be continuing the networking. I know we've been doing a lot of networking today, which is wonderful. So meet and greet the person or people sitting on either side of you. And I'd like you to get into groups of, you know, maybe three to five and just talk about it. And what I want you to talk about and then later on share with the larger group, not what you'd want to say or what you hope you would say, but what do you really think? you would say in that moment. So again, don't give me what you think is the right answer. Give me what you think you really would say in that moment. So we'll do about five minutes of you guys chit-chatting and then we'll share and see what you guys have come up with. All right, and let me, let me give you a few options before we jump into your answers. Option number one, hey Luke, don't worry about it. You know, we're all running from one crisis to another. Please just get it to me as soon as you can. Option number two, I really appreciate your letting me know you know, what do you think you can get it done, given your workload and everything you've got on your plate? Option number three, I can't believe this. Why didn't you let me know about this earlier? Option four, this is not acceptable. You need to get it to me by the end of the day or something else, something completely different, your own customized response to him. Okay, take about five minutes, talk about it, and then we'll hear from you guys. Okay, let's see what you guys talked about. And let me just say that there is not necessarily a right answer. It's going to depend on a few different factors. I probably have, you know, said one version <coughs> of, of each one of these at some point in my career. So it's not necessarily that there's one right answer. But I just want to get into this discussion a little bit because I think this is a classic scenario that a lot of project managers face, or at least I'll speak for myself, it was a classic scenario that I faced where I felt like I was constantly pulled uh, between trying to develop the team but also trying to clamp down on people who weren't really pulling their weight and trying to deal with these sorts of situations effectively as they arose. So I'm really interested to see what you guys talked about. So, volunteer, what'd you say? Yes. Ah, so we want to ensure that they understand, Luke, because we don't have the vendor names today, unfortunately that's going to delay our selection process. So I do want to be sure that, that you understand that. So a little bit of guilt, I feel, kind of going there. We want to be sure they understand those consequences. Okay, I see people nodding. What else? Yes. Okay. Wow, Luke should have Luke one should have communicated this earlier, but it's part of being a project manager is getting status reports. Ah. So should we have taken some, some responsibility ourselves and checked in with Luke? Okay. And see where he was at. So maybe there's a mutual responsibility element here. Usually they're slackers, it's not a complete surprise. So maybe you're what I'm hearing you say a little bit is maybe. I should have proactively checked in. Maybe I couldn't trust 
uh, he's going to show up on Friday with everything done, maybe I should have been checking with him on Wednesday just to ensure we didn't have any issues at the meeting. Wonderful feedback. What else? All good comments. You had the same situation you asked him. Mm. Oh, ah. Well, now he's a liar on top of being a slacker. <laughs> sure the consequences are clear, all of those sorts of things. So I turn to him and I say, Luke, thank you so much for letting me know about that. I appreciate it. Which action item was that? Which number was that? Because again, I'm going to have a precedent of documenting these action items. Oh, that was number 37. Great. When we get to number 37 during our readout, please just give your update to the group. Now, what have I done with that response? I put it back on him. Because I promise you, if he's running up to me five minutes before the meeting's about to start, telling me he didn't do what he told me he was going to do two weeks ago, all he's doing, in essence, is attempting to transfer the accountability of that action item from him to me. And all I've done, because he wants me to go to the team and say, oh, you know, Luke didn't get a chance to get it, but he said he's going to get it to us by Friday. So let's move to the next item. He wants me to do that, okay? All I'm doing is pushing it back to him and saying, hey, accountability, it's your item. It means you just give your update to the group. Now notice, did I condemn him and tell him he's horrible and you are going to hell and, and all that? You're going to burn in hell for not... <laughs> I didn't do that, nor did I give him a pass, okay? Because who really needs to make that judgment? The team. And that's what I'm talking about when I say I want to build a culture of accountability within the team. Because the other issue is sometimes people will try to get into this tit for tat just with you, and it becomes really difficult because you almost feel like you're in a parent-child relationship. And I want to get away from that. I want people to feel that when they're on my team, if they say they're going to do something and take something, they're doing that not for me. It's not doing me a personal favor. They're doing that as a team member, and they're accepting that on behalf of the entire team. 
The other reason why I like that is teams I found do a wonderful job of that discernment that that young man was saying back there in terms of, is this a one-time thing? Does this person do it all the time? And really deciding how hard should we come down on this person or not. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> I, have, I have to be honest, I don't think I've, I've quite had that, but really it goes back to what she said before. This isn't going to be something I spring on them. This, this isn't going to be something they don't know about. We're going to establish a ground rule at the beginning of the team that any time you accept responsibility for a task, it's your responsibility to always update the team and update the status. Okay, so it's not going to be a surprise. They're going to know. They're also going to know, and trust me, anybody who was on my teams knew this. The very first thing on my agenda item for all of my status meetings was review open action items. So everybody knows, first thing I'm going to do is pull out that spreadsheet and go down the list and say, number 17, who has that? What's the status? Number 18, who has that? What's the status? That in and of itself, just setting up that structure, I promise you, will diminish a lot of that slacking behavior. Because people know coming in, the first thing I'm going to do is ask you to update the team on your status. OK? What do you think? Does that make sense? That's what I, and also I treat everybody fairly, everybody fairly. Because what's the problem with number one and number two? Because we feel that pull. That's kind of what we want to say, because we all can relate to that. But what's the downside? If we just kind of give them a pass and we say, oh, you know, it's OK, don't worry about it. Yes? Set a date for a time OK, now we may not have a firm date. Even if you do have a date, let's say he says, oh, I can get it to you, you know, in a week. And I say, oh, OK. What's the problem with that? It sets, a it sets a precedent, OK? Now, it sets a precedent not just with him, everybody else. Dr. Phil said a long time ago, you, t you teach people how to treat you, OK? And what I've started finding is if I'm a little too lenient at the beginning, next thing you know, I'm six months into the project, and then this one's got an issue, and this one's got to complain, and this one says they're going to be three days late. And well, you gave an excuse to this one, so why can't I have you know, another two days? So I want to get out of that never-ending cycle. I want the team to decide how we're going to run the project. And I'm not saying crises don't come up, because they do, but you at least acknowledge, hey, this is what happened. I'm giving my update to the group. And then we as a team decide how we're going to move forward. Maybe we talk about the consequences. Maybe we use this as a learning opportunity and we establish a ground rule. Maybe we say in that moment, hey, guys, what are we going to do in the future? Because now, because of this, we're having to slip our schedule by another week. So what can we do? What ground rule can we put in place to ensure things like this don't happen in the future? And in my team, what we did was we said, hey, anytime you've got something and you realize you're not going to be able to meet that date, it's your responsibility to pick up the phone and get another team member engaged and to take that action item on your behalf. So it was a learning opportunity for us.